In this tutorial, I'll be using Maya to create a bouncing ball animation. And we'll use some principles of animation, uh, like arcs, we'll use squash and stretch, uh, we'll use exaggeration. Uh, the rig I'm using here, this is a pre-rigged ball. This is called the Ultimate Ball for Maya. Um, it's created by Uger Yediskin, and I found it on highend3d.com. It's free to download, and it's a really useful tool for creating simple ball animations. It's got a, um, these controllers here, these little circles around the ball allow me to actually use those for manipulation so if I want to move this ball I don't click on the ball itself I click on this controller here and then I can move and um, rotate and things like that now there is this triangle on the bottom this is kind of the base of the uh, rig the balls measurements in the channel box the X Y and Z are all based off of this point um, so you don't really need to do much with this. You can, if you click on it, you can increase the scale of the ball here by changing global scale, and you can just type in a number here, or if you click on this text in middle mouse out here, you can slide your mouse to the right and left while you're holding down the middle mouse and change that. I'm going to keep it at one, but it also has under ball type a couple of different um, skins for the ball, which is really cool. I'm going to go ahead and just stick with uh, the basic one. and. I'm going to begin with the animation. Now these controllers on the top and the bottom here, I'll press W to go back to my move tool, which is this button here too. The shortcut key for that is W. If I click on one of these, these are squashing and stretching abilities. And I can squash and stretch from the top, and I can move it as well. I can also do the same from the bottom. And so that just gives me a little bit more control over the ball than I would just by making a sphere. Actually, a lot more control than that. So I'm going to create a ball that is bouncing along the x-axis here. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate a little bit. So it's this is my x-axis. It's the red arrow, and I can see that down here. Um, first thing I want to do is set my first keyframe, my zero keyframe. So I want to create an arc, and I'm also following, this is from Angry Animator, this is a pretty good example of that. So I've got a couple of things going on at the same time with the bouncing ball. Uh, the ball is traveling in arcs, it's going to hit the ground, and then the next arc is going to be lower because it loses energy when it hits the ground, and each following arc will be a little lower. Also, the ball will pick up speed as it drops, which means that I want it to go faster, which means frames further apart as it is going down and then when it reaches the top of these arcs it's a little bit slower and so the first thing I want to do is set my keys, my poses and those are the most important movement aspects of our animation um, and that way I can figure out my timing because timing can be very difficult especially in 3D I find that people tend to um, you look at a single frame for a long time and you think it's going to last a long time and then it ends up being a 24th of a second and so it's really easy to have things go a lot faster than you anticipate so I want to figure out now my main poses. And I think the most important parts of this animation are probably when it's at the top of its arc, that's when it's at its slowest, and when it hits the bottom. So I'm going to get set keys for each of those points in here. So I'm just dealing with this center large controller in the middle, that's all my movement stuff. And I'm going to begin by lifting this up to be at the, I'm going to have it start in the air. And the way that I set this, I want to set a keyframe, which is Maya remembering where it is in this space. And I do that by pressing S. And when I press S, you'll see that the if you're in the channel box, if not, you can either click on it or press Control A until it shows up. Uh, the channel box turns red, and there's also in the timeline here a red line that represents that keyframe. That means that that information about the ball is now recorded at that point. When I do an animation, there are three steps. The first one is I move forward to where I want to be next. So I want it to hit the ground in about let's say a fourth of a second. So we'll do like six or seven frames. Eh, maybe a little more. Let's go ahead and do, I'll do nine, uh, 10 frames. So I move forward to frame 10 here at the bottom. Oh, another thing we should do is, if you'll notice in the right hand side of your screen down here, there's a symbol that looks like a guy running from the sun. I don't know what it is. But if you click on that, you want to make sure that your playback speed is set to real time. If it's on play every frame, it just tries to play it as quickly as possible. Real time will keep it at 24 frames per second, which is your standard animation speed. So make sure that that's at real time and press save. Now I'm on frame 10. I'm going to move it forward a little bit and drag it down until it's hitting the ground. And I'm using the 
the ground plane here is, is my reference for the ground, so right there. So I moved forward in time, I put the ball where I want it to be at that time, and then I press S again. And now I create another keyframe. Now if I move, you'll see that Maya has figured out frames 1 through 9 to get me from 0 to 10. So all I have to do are the, the key poses, and Maya will figure out the rest. Now it doesn't always do a great job, we'll have to go in and refine it. So we'll keep that in mind. Also, another thing that can be really useful, um, in your modeling mode, if you click on this animation tab here in your ribbon, this option here is called the motion trail. And when I click on that, it will create um, a line that you can use as a reference. You can even click on these points and change where um, the ball is at those keyframes. If I want to get rid of it, make sure you don't click on the point and delete it. That'll delete the key. You just click right on the line itself and hit delete to get rid of it. But for now, I'm going to keep. So now I'm going to move forward a little bit more, probably another nine frames or so. Let's go to frame 18. Uh, oh, got to make sure I'm on the controller for the ball. I'll move forward a little bit more and up, not quite as much as before, and hit S. Now you can see that the motion trail of the ball now does this. Now Maya tries to smooth out the curves of things. And so I don't want it to just slowly curve back up to here. I'll have to fix that later. But if I come back and I hit play, you can see that we're getting the, the rough idea of the animation down. We're doing the layout of it. So I'm going to move forward maybe to, what did I have the last one at 18? Let's do maybe 25 for the next one. I'm trying to make each one following just a little faster. And I'll hit S again. I'll move forward. Move it forward and up, hit S again. Move it to the timeline, move the ball, and hit S again. Now, I can also adjust here, so I can even use the motion trail to adjust it, but you'll see that when I play this, the only way I can really tell uh, if my timing is right is by playing it in real time. So I want to make sure I go back to frame zero and hit play and say, is that too fast or too slow? If it's too slow, that means that the frames are too far away from each other. If it's too fast, it means the frames are too close. I can adjust where the frames are in the timeline by holding down shift and dragging a box. This box is red. There are two sets of uh, triangles in it. The inner set of triangles is just going to slide all of the selected frames in whatever direction you choose. So if I want to move frame 2 a little closer to keyframe 1, I can just slide them there. The outer triangles will either shrink the frames within the box to be closer together or faster, or stretch them out to be a little further apart. So even after I create these keys, I can still adjust their speed right here. And I'm just trying to get the overall. So I feel like that first part is way too fast the, from frame 0 to frame, what is it, 8 now? So I'm going to go ahead and drag those out just a little bit more. And I can adjust this to make it the way I want to. Also notice if you click off of this or if you click on any of the other controllers, your keyframes don't show up because those keyframes are specifically for this controller. And so anything else you do is going to be on a separate set of keyframes, which we'll be doing here in a little bit. So now when I watch this, okay, well, it'll be a little easier to tell once we fix the fact that this curves down. Now we want the ball to move very quickly to hit the ground and then move pretty much just as quickly back up. I don't want it to have this gradual curve up. So I can do some things to adjust that. I can do it in the motion trail, but I think it's easier to do it in the graph editor. Up here at the top of your screen, you have a menu option called Windows. Animation editors is your first option, and the first one in there is called Graph Editor. And this will pull up a, a graphic uh, symbolic representation of what your object is doing in movement X, Y, and Z, and rotation X, Y, and Z. As an example, if I click on translate Z, translate means basically forward movement in 3D, I didn't move at all along the Z axis. My Z axis is backward. As you can see, I'm perfectly straight along that line. And so when I look at the graph editor for translation along Z, a flat line means nothing is happening. So there's no movement along the Z axis. There's no rotation on the X or the Y or the Z. There is movement along the x-axis. Now the motion or the 
graph editor can be a little hard to understand. Um, what we're looking at here, this is translate x. So this is forward movement. x-axis was along this way. It was this red line here. And this forward movement means that my ball starts kind of slowly. The flatter the line is, the slower it's going. And then it picks up speed. And then when it reaches the end, it starts to slow down a little bit before it reaches the end. And I can adjust the graph, to, uh, the graph right in here. So I could say, like, if I move forward to, so I want it to be at, at its slowest at frame 24 here about, which is this frame right here. So I can actually pick these frames and I can drag them so that they are, so now this is slower and I can even click on these handles here, they're Bezier curves. So I could adjust by hand what the speed of that thing's going to do. And as you do that, you should be able to see it in what you're working on. I created an extra one here. Also, keep in mind, if you ever go back to an old keyframe and you make a change and press S again, it will replace it. You can also go in between previous keyframes and create a new one that will adjust it a little differently. For example, this one goes straight down here at the bottom. I can move forward. I'll, maybe I'll go to frame 3, move the ball forward a little bit, and hit S again. And now you'll see that keyframe change a little bit here. So maybe in here too I'll maybe push it to the left a little bit. So now after I get the basic speed of it down, now I'm mostly concerned about the finer details. Now I can go back and chunk the, the more complex animations that I want to. And the main thing I'm going to use the graph editor for is for this translate Y. Now this looks like the exact same path of the ball, but it really isn't. This is just telling me movement on the y-axis. This line here is that it's at the zero mark of the y, and up here is it being up or down. In this case, always up. So it starts up, it moves down. It doesn't have any forward movement in this. Mostly I say that because it, it's easy to think that this is just showing me the movement of the ball. It's not. Uh, it's just movement, movement along the y-axis. So what I want it to do is when it hits the zero mark, which is when I'm considering the bottom, I don't want it to have this gradual slow down and back up. I want it to be a straight line. And when I select this, I can either click on it or drag a box around it. I think it's a little easier. I can click this symbol right here. This is my linear tangent symbol. And when I click on that, it will force those lines to be straight. And then I can adjust them even more using this. Using the handles, I can adjust um, it much more specifically. So I'm going to do that for that bounce and for this bounce. And I can even take these handles and adjust them in here to get more of the speed I'm going for. So I do want the top of this arc to be slower, which means a flatter line. So now when I watch this, let's see what those changes made. Okay, so I think it's probably a little slow. Once again, I'm going to just shift click and drag all of these and maybe just pull them a little closer together here. And I can always make these fine adjustments as I go. Now once I've gotten that and I can make more adjustments in the graph editor or in, in here as well by adding more animations. So maybe here I want the, the be up here a little bit longer, so I'll go back to frame 33, move it out just a little bit, and hit S, and that will add a new keyframe which changes the motion graph or the motion trail and changes the path that the ball is going to follow. So once I've gotten that kind of overall feel of this thing, probably want to mess around with the speeds a little bit more, but now I can start dealing with the, the squash and stretch. So when we have a, a object moving very quickly. One of the ways that we can make it look like it's moving quickly is to stretch it in the direction it's moving. And when it hits the ground, specifically here, at frame 10 or so, it, I want this ball to squish down. And the way I'm going to do that is by using this top handle here, or this top controller. Now, notice that when I click on the top controller there are no keys. So with any time I'm using a new um, set of a uh, new timeline, a new controller, a new object, I want to go back to zero and press S to set it at perfectly round at the beginning. 
Now, I want it to be at frame 10. I want it to be maybe frame 11. I want it to look like it's squishing. So I'm going to take this one and drag it down and squish it. Now that looks like a lot. We're exaggerating how much it's squishing um, to, to really emphasize it. It's one of the principles of animation is that we really have to push and exaggerate things. And it's not actually that much of an exaggeration as you can see in this video that this happens very rapidly in real life so you don't really see it but these principles of squash and stretch apply even in reality. So we're just trying to exaggerate that a little because in a 24th of a second it's much more difficult to see. So I'm going to squash that there. Now if I hit S, the problem with this is that it is going to, because up here where the ball was not squished yet, it thinks I want it to start squishing from the keyframe where it wasn't to the one that it was. And a way I can avoid that, I'm going to control S a little bit, is if I just set a key right before that's not squished, maybe right there, and I hit S, and maybe a key right after that isn't squished, hit S again, then when I squish this one, it'll only squish in relation to those keys right before and after it. So now when I play this, it's not squished for the first little bit, and then at the bottom here, it squishes before it bounces back up. And I think I'm even going to take this one frame and move it one closer, so it only squishes for a single frame or two. And I can do that here too. So now as it drops, it's a little fast, you don't really get to see it, so I'm going to stretch that out a little bit, make this frame go further away, so maybe it's stretched for two frames here. And also what I can do is it falls, if I stretch it in the direction it's falling, it's going to make it look like it's going faster. We're trying to replicate the idea of, of motion blur that happens when you film fast actions with a camera. So I'm going to click on this bottom one here, this bottom controller, set a new keyframe at zero, and as it falls, I'm going to have it kind of point towards the direction it's falling and stretch out a little bit. And as it falls faster, if I stretch it more, and here I'll unsquish it. So that will give it a little more personality. I'm trying to exaggerate this because that is what gives inanimate objects and animated characters um, personality and uh, allure. So now when I play this, it's starting to feel a lot better. Now same thing up here. I want it to, as it bounces up here, I'm going to go back to the top handle and maybe send it just this way slightly and stretch it out a little bit. Not as much because it's not going as fast. And then when it reaches the top here, we're going to level it back out. And then as it starts to fall again, I'm going to go back to the bottom one. Maybe set a key right here before so that it doesn't start stretching all the way back. And so every new thing that I add to this is going to enrich my animation. I don't want to scrimp on these kinds of details because it's that's what really makes it look like um, an animation at all, honestly, is all of this stuff. Without it, it just isn't the same. So I'm going to go back to my bottom one, set a key there before the action happens. Uh, it's, it's a good idea to set keys like directly before something so that the change doesn't go back to, if I hadn't done that, it would s uh, start stretching in this direction all the way back at frame 25, which is not what I want. Now when I watch it, might be a little too much there. 
I can always go back and adjust it a little bit. So I think I want less stretch here. But that's the process of animation. Oh, and I didn't hit S. That's the other thing, too, is when you make a change, make sure you press S or it's not recording your change, and that is not good. And so as I go through this, I can keep refining it more. I'd probably want to make this one a little faster, so I can even come back here to the controller handle, grab these, drag them a little closer together until I get it looking the way that I want. But it's really a process of refinement, of going back and readjusting over and over again. After you get the basics down, you come back and keep doing up more and more passes on something to get it. And so I'm feeling better about that. I want to keep working on it a little more. But that's how it works. Now, if I want to uh, export a really quick movie of this to, um, to show to other people, there's uh, an option called Play Blast. And that will create uh, basically an exact copy of whatever you're seeing your, on your screen, including these controllers, including this motion trail. And so the way you can do that is by right-clicking on the timeline, and you'll see Play Blast. If you want to change where Play Blast is saving, because I can't remember where it saves, click the square next to Play Blast, and then you can tell it to save to file, and you can browse to save it to somewhere specific, wherever you want it to save. Um, I'll save it to the desktop. Call it ball and it'll save it as uh, I believe an AVI so when I save that and I play blast it now these files tend to be very large oh also it'll yeah, kind of zoom in on it for you so there is the play blast of my animation so I could watch it and get a feel for it and that's one way to um, have something that you can show to other people um, to get feedback um, and etc so that's um, uh, kind of an introduction to working in graph editor and animation in Maya.